Can you believe this is my first best of beauty video, right? So strange because I was thinking about it and I never filmed a best of beauty video last year. But then once again, I am kind of new into the beauty world. Um, I've always been a skincare junkie. So the fact that I have amassed this much beauty products and have really, really taught myself, watched so many videos, talked to a lot of people on how to um, apply makeup the right way. So this is gonna be a fun one, guys. So get yourself a bag of popcorn, some hot chocolate, and let's dive into how I created this look with my beauty favorites of 2019. Oh, oops, I forgot. If you're new to this channel, I do everything from skincare, beauty, lifestyle, and a little bit of fashion. So if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed below. And also take a peek at my Instagram at Glow with Ava, where you're gonna be seeing a lot more fun stuff that I do outside of this channel. All right, now let's actually begin. All right, you know what? We're just gonna go with the flow because there are too many products to cover today, but I figured it would be best for me to kind of do it as I talk along instead of just sitting here and saying, this is my favorite, this is my favorite, which I could do, but this is more fun, you know? So I got my makeup brush ready here and I have all the products I wanna kind of cover here and there. It was really hard to pick just one item from each category, so I have a couple of different ones I do wanna mention here and there, but I will end up just using one product for like a bronzer, for example. All right, let's begin. So the first thing is I'm going to use a primer and this is kind of a no-brainer for me. Um, the primer for this year is the Chacha Silk Primer. I know I'm late into the game, I know, I know, but I finally got to test this and before that I was like, this is so expensive for a primer, do I really need this? And then I used it. Um, I first started using this in like May, June-ish before the summer months and then this was literally the biggest lifesaver in the summertime. I think this is like the best for oily skin especially because after using this over your face and I kind of concentrated more in like the T-zone where I do get oily, your makeup seriously lasts so long and then it allows your foundation to go on so much smoother. I just need to use Use my hand to kind of spread this primer out. While we're at it, another primer that I actually really liked was the Flush Beauty um, one. So this actually has a little bit more of like the glimmer and kind of the glow pop. So I don't like using this all over my face. While as a Tatcha, I definitely can. So this is one that I kind of use more like on my cheekbones. I can use this right now actually. I'll pop it right here. And as you can see, it definitely has that highlighting pop in here but I love the gel-like smoothing primer as well. And then the next primer that I do want to mention is the Paula's Choice Soothing Primer Serum. This also has SPF 30, which I love. So it's an added layer of protection. This also is like a gel-like consistent like this. And you know what? all three primers. I'm just going to put it on my forehead where the sun hits the most. And all three primers feel very different when you touch it, when you apply it on the skin. And all three have different functionalities, which is why I just applied it in different areas of my face, which you can totally do depending on what you need. Um, but overall, I think my topic has to be the Tatcha. It is something that can be most universally worn and more multi-purpose in my opinion. Okay, so now that I have the primer on, you guys know this was coming because I already warned you guys this is going to be part of my beauty favorites of 2019. And that is the Chanel Le Beige. So I did a separate whole video on how to best wear the wear this product. So when it launched, and I actually had to go to like three different stores to finally get this in my shade. I am in the shade Light. Um, so it's perfect for the winter. So once again, I'm just going to use two pumps of this and use this brush that it comes with. Some people don't actually use, like using this brush, but I think when you apply it like this on your hand and then apply it on your face, it actually does really make a difference instead of kind of going straight with it to your face. So at first you don't really see that big of a difference when you apply it and you'll see more details in that other exclusive Chanel video, but um, it does make a difference when you have an extra layer on a foundation or just like a light moisturizer. Actually on days when I use this product, I don't go in with like a heavy foundation on top. I kind of just go in with like a light um, tinted moisturizer or nothing at times. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to actually go in with a foundation after this. For days when I'm only using this, for example, I would go in with a CCAC cream from Clay Cosmetics. So this is actually one of my favorite discoveries of this year. Um, I have this in medium light. And it's made out of this micro capsule technology that after you apply it on your face, it just kind of diffuses out its color. Because when you first squeeze it out, it's like this whitish color. And then after you spread it, it just becomes like this really smooth looking complexion. I'm obsessed with it. Um, so I'll do that in another video, so stay tuned. 
But today I want to do more of like the foundation route. If you guys saw my decorte video already, you guys know I am freaking obsessed with this foundation. It is slightly on the pricier end, but I am in love with this. So after using this foundation, you almost feel like you can't use anything else. This is definitely my number number one pick of this year in terms of foundation. I said this just definitely feels like my skin but better. It's very lightweight, very long lasting as well and actually feels hydrating. So that's my number one pick and I'm just going to use my brush, uh, artiste brush to spread it out as well. Um, so today, even today, I'm going to cover like some of my favorite makeup brushes as well because I've actually gotten a lot of requests to cover some of my favorite makeup brushes, especially those who are starting out. And it's funny when I get asked that question because as of last year, I owned like two brushes. I'm not even kidding. And then like, look at this stash now. I have so many brushes because I just wanted to like invest in brushes and learn for myself what works for me, different techniques to use them. And also a lot of makeup artists like use brushes in different ways. So for example, like a concealer brush can be used as an eyeshadow brush, all different kinds of purposes. So I've been really experimenting with that and seeing what technique works best for the kind of overall feel that I want to go for. So today I'll be kind of showing you guys that technique as well. All right, so that was so easy because that Decorte foundation just glides on like magic. Another foundation that I do want to touch upon today is the La Mer foundation. But another foundation that I do want to touch upon today is the La Mer foundation. Um, this is our cushion foundation that came out this year. And this is also kind of on the pricier end, but with two refillable packages. So I finished one and I'm already on the second one. But on easy days or when you're traveling and stuff, I don't want to bring this whole kind of foundation. Um, and sometimes foundation sticks can be a little sticky. This is like the cushion that gives you a lot, a lot of luminosity. It's that instant glow and something that is really, really high coverage. So I actually saw that Jenna was using this on on her wedding day and I totally totally get why she did that. There are a lot more foundations that I did try this year that I wanted to include but nothing tops those two for 2019. And after the Decorte foundation I honestly don't really need a concealer at all but I did want to kind of touch upon this concealer from Clay de Pooh and everyone has been raving about this concealer stick so I had to kind of try it and I am in shade ivory so I'm just going to kind of apply it here and a little bit under my eyes i kind of like using it with my fingers and then applying it a technique that i learned this year was i kind of use like a fluffy brush like this this is from real techniques and kind of then brush a concealer out over a larger dimension over your face just so that it gives more of like that airbrush look and you actually have a lot more control over um, where it goes instead of just using a tiny um, brush for concealers when you do that not only does it mark like some concealer brush marks but it just is feel like it's like concentrated in one area and doesn't kind of blend into the skin. So when you use like a fluffy brush like this, it's easier for that foundation to blend in with the rest of your skin and give more of like that natural look. God, I got this hair stuck here. Okay. And after you kind of brush that out with whatever that is remaining on the um, brush, kind of brush that over your eye because you definitely don't want foundation or too much concealer on your eye because that can um, affect your eyeshadow look but just applying a little bit with the leftover gives a nice finish and a base before you apply eyeshadow so that is my concealer pick and then brows you know what i still am on the hunt for a really good eyebrow brush um but this is gonna be old glossier boy brow i didn't discover it until this year because um, I just have been really late at the brow game. And guys, also like I'm a little late into the makeup game. That's why I was thinking like, you know what? Last year I didn't even have a best of makeup um, video. I've always been, uh, skincare has always been my niche and I'm still following the mantra that if you have good skin, you don't really need that much makeup, um, which is why I haven't really dabbled in the makeup space as much. And every single makeup look that I create is going to lean still more towards the no makeup makeup look. You're not going to see that glam kind of look for me. Um, so that is why I never did my brows until this year. My sister was like, girl, if you're going to be an influencer, you've got to learn how to do your brows because your brows are looking terrible. So I'm still trying to perfect how to draw my brows and stuff, but this has been the easiest way to kind of brush my brows and kind of look more presentable. And I'm going to be the first to say here that Glossier makeup and skincare, not really my thing, but boy brow, 
I'm gonna be repurchased forever. It's so good. All right, so now that my brows are done, let's see what we should go in with. Oh, powder. So a lot of good powders this year as well, and also very new to the powder game. Actually, when I was in Korea last year, um, I purchased this Chanel powder, which is still one of my holy grails. Um, I love it, but since I bought this last year, I was like, I can't include it in a 2019 video. Um, and then I purchased this during the Sephora sale this year. This is the Charlotte Tilbury um, Air... This is the Charlotte Filter Airbrush Flawless Filter um, Powder. So I actually have got it in both shades, the light and the medium as well. For the winter skin, I like using the light one more. And I've tried using this in so many different ways with so many different brushes. So um, one way to use it is kind of using like this Real Techniques brush that has more of like a fluffy end like this. So this is really great for kind of using this to concentrate on under your eyes that applies really well when you use kind of a smaller brush for this area. If you want to apply powder kind of more over your entire face, I suggest going in with slightly a bigger brush. And I think this powder is the best for kind of giving more concentrated and if you want to lighten up certain areas, especially under your eyes. And after giving a contour, if you want to accentuate that kind of using a powder underneath that, this powder is amazing for it and really long lasting. If you want more of a translucent glow um, over your face, then I suggest kind of using more of like a loose powder. Um, and one that I've been really liking this year is the By Terry um, Hyaluronic Hydro Power. And the term hyaluronic really, really got me because I, at the end of the day, I'm still a skincare junkie. So anything that is hydrating won't dry up my skin will really help because a lot of powders I have used have actually dried out my skin um, which is why I just love using some loose powders that definitely do a little less of that and also they sent me this um, big powder brush which this is my favorite brush of 2019 so I just kind of dabble in it it's got like it's like a white loose powder as you can see and then I just shake it out and apply it kind of like over my t-zone first and over my face it's, it's very much a translucent powder i know that they came out with some more tinted powders as well um but at the end of the day i still like this powder the most i feel like because i just want like a small veil over the existing makeup so. okay so that is the base done and it really doesn't look like i'm wearing a lot it doesn't look cakey it still looks and feels very natural on the skin and before we go in with bronze or anything, I kind of want to touch on my lips because when my lips aren't colored and feel dull, it just kind of ruins my mood. And I also always love going in with lips first because depending on that color, I kind of like playing around with my eye makeup and blush. So my favorite lip product this year, I actually had too many, but this one has to top everything off. The Clay de Poo, um, this is their lip in... This is the Clay de Poo Lip Luminizer. It's in between of a lipstick, lip gloss, all of that. It's like a crayon -y thing, but glides on. So nice. And this shade especially, I feel like suits me so well. It's got that like kind of like a cute-ish color. So this one just brightens up my mood so much. And now we're actually ready to begin with the rest. So the first one I want to go in with is... Um, contour and bronzer a lot of bronzers this year and it's funny because all my favorite bronzers of this year are bronzers that have actually been around for a pretty long time like for example hula do you guys remember this i mean i'm sure my friends were using this in middle school but i never wore makeup so i didn't know and i finally got a chance to use this this year and i'm obsessed so maybe we'll go on with this one but another one that i had to highlight is the hourglass um ambient powder so this is their bronze light and the shade is amazing i love using this on my eyes as eyeshadow as well which actually let's do a little bit right now so i'm gonna go in with this Eric perez um brush i love the fluffy ends in the end i'm going to go in with a little bit of the lighter shade right here and give a little bit more definition to my eyes not necessarily as eyeshadow but in the crease where my eye creases if you give if you kind of add more color there, just instantly adds a little bit more dimension to your eyes and you look more alive. So just kind of go in in the creases like that. This is a trick that I learned from um, a makeup artist at MAC Cosmetics. Do you see the difference now? It really looks like I'm not wearing anything, but I see an instant difference. 
And the other one is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow, another favorite. I wore this to my um, engagement photo shoot because it just gives like a really natural, subtle pop and glow. But you know what? I feel like I just have to use the OG benefit today. I have a little small brush in here, but I'm just going to use that when I travel. But when I'm at home, I'm going to go in with slightly of a bigger brush. This is from the Sephora collection, and I can't ever throw this brush away because this is the first brush I ever bought for myself, guys. I went to Sephora and bought a highlighter from Becca, and I asked them, hey, what brush do I need? And they recommended this. So I was like, okay, it's $40. Really expensive brush, but... I felt like I just needed it and it has changed my life since then. So I like kind of using that down to the neck area as well. And just kind of airbrush that through a little bit in the hairline. Um, I have dabbled with a couple of cream bronzers this year as well. Um, the one that I actually did kind of like is the Fenty Beauty bronzer. I feel like it's too strong here. I'm going to have to airbrush that out. And another technique is that when you feel like you have a little too much bronze going on right there, then go in with the earlier like foundation brushes and kind of smooth that out. So I'm just gonna use that foundation brush over to smooth that out because I don't want something that is like too streaky and makes it too obvious that you're wearing bronzer. So that's a little another trick right there. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, so some cream bronzers that I've tried, Fenty Beauty and also Flush Beauty. Maybe it's because I'm still like kind of new to applying makeup and stuff. Um, I still feel like powder bronzers is a way to go for me for more of that natural finish. And especially with the cream bronzers, um, I really love a lot of the cream bronzers from the Clean Beauty space, which I will do a video on that. But from, for the other ones, I just feel like if I apply it on the forehead, it looks really unnatural. It feels like I have like a separate hairline up there. All right, that was the hula people. You guys were into makeup in 2009, about 10 years ago. You probably know this product. I'm very behind, still testing it, but love it. A lot of good eyeshadow palettes this year. Actually, the um, I used to be obsessed with buying all different kinds of eyeshadow palettes. I had all of the palettes from Urban Decay and I still have a few. It's been like five years since I've had them. Not sure if it's too safe, but I've been dabbling with some of more eyeshadow palettes as well as single um, eyeshadow pots this year. But I have to say, sometimes palette is the way to go. And this Shiseido palette, this is the um, Miyuki Street Nudes so easy and it's really hard to nail down your colors like this but every single color in this palette is so natural looking and just makes eyeshadow application so easy because the the colors in here blend well really together so even if you aren't the best at applying eyeshadow and not really good about blending and stuff um which is definitely me this eyeshadow palette just like i feel like does the job for you this eyeshadow brush is from innisfree it's got a slightly bigger end so i like using this when i'm using a neutral color like this as a base to kind of cover it over a larger dimension and blending it out with the hourglass earlier sometimes i just kind of apply that down below here as well not too much though and then another one is this brush from bobby brown it's got a smaller end and definitely has more precision to it so that's when i go in with some of the darker color here a little bit shake it off and then just apply it to the edges kind of like your eyeliner and in the end isn't that so pretty i'm obsessed <laughs> and another eyeshadow palette that i just have to highlight this year is this pat mcgrath mothership palette i actually got this as a birthday present for my best friend this year so thank you so much if you're watching um but it is this palette and it has so many gorgeous colors and at first when i saw this i was a little intimidated on how i'm supposed to use this but these colors look intense and if you layer them on it can create that real intensity that you want but it can also create some like nice subtle looks for example if you just want a little bit of that glitter on top you just apply with your fingers and just kind of add like a very little bit as like a shimmer on top and and it's very very pretty but just a little bit just adds a kind of pop that i love and Someday I'll do another eyeshadow tutorial and a full look using this palette because it's too good to pass up, right? Eyes are done and let's go in with um, my mascara. I stopped using eyeliner a couple months ago because my eyelashes were growing really longer and this also has to be mentioned in Best of Beauty because one of the biggest changes this year has been my eyelash growth after using Latisse from Hypostrophe. 
I started seeing a difference in like a month on how long my lashes were because before even using mascara didn't really do a big difference for me because I just didn't have lashes but now I understood like when you have long beautiful lashes which I still don't have um, you can go out in the streets with just a little bit of mascara and it will make the world of a difference and now I just kind of like to accentuate my lashes even more so that I don't need eyeliner so anyways if you want to try it out for yourself trust me it's going to make the biggest difference ever whether you already have really long lashes or you don't have lashes like me so I have a discount code for you below there just to check it out and stuff and a lot of mascaras this year, I dabbled in a lot of the clean beauty space as well as um, normal mascaras. I think it's harder for clean beauty brands to formulate the right type of mascara that actually really works at lengthening and kind of making sure it stays on for the entire day. So I'm still going to stick to my classic mascaras. And if any company does mascaras really well, it's Lancome. Lancome um, has Lancome. This one is their lengthening line. So if you see the bristle like this, it is very much aimed for um, kind of lengthening your lashes, which is what I want more so than just volumizing it. Because you know, I just have to brag about my much longer lashes these days now. And as you see, it doesn't clump up during the process at all. This product is too obvious a product and you guys were hoping for some more juicy mascara updates. I'm sorry, but sometimes I just stick to old habits. And this is a mascara that I've been using since literally high school. It's been 10 years since I've been using Lancome and it's my trusted baby. You guys basically saw the whole process, like no fake lashes, no other mascara, it was just this and it looks like I'm wearing fake lashes. Still to this day, after I do my mascara, and I'm like, oh my god, how is this humanly possible for my lashes to be this long? I'm telling you, it's Latisse. It's so good. Single-handedly, best investment I made this year. Okay, now lastly, let's do some highlighter and blush. My favorite two products to buy in the makeup world. So as I said earlier, this bronze and glow, this highlighter is one of my favorite favorites um, for a, a really big pop. Another one that I love is the Laura Mercier highlighter. This embossing is too pretty to use, but I love the kind of like rose gold shimmer that it gives off. I just really want to show you guys how this color works. And I'm just going in with this um, Makeup Forever Straight and Wavy 122 brush, and I love the double fiber that's in here. There's so many different ways to use this. You can use this as a powder brush, even foundation brush, but I love using this um, for highlighters because I kind of like just dabble in it like this in the palette and then what I do is I start from the top right here and then I make circles down and this, is, this brush makes that easy so when you make the circles down into your cheekbones like this um, it's not like you're creating like one streak of highlight you're kind of like blending that in with your foundation and the rest of your skin and creating more of that natural look and as you just saw the highlight is so gorgeous and I'm gonna do the other side as well. Because it has that rose gold tint, I like kind of bringing that down even to like my cheeks where my blush is going to even create that like single monotone kind of look. So when you apply it right here, it's gonna blend right to the highlighter like that and also blend into the bronzer. So it's all connected. So, so pretty, so pretty. And another blush that I had to just talk about is this Oriad, and this is their limited edition palette. I feel honestly embarrassed to talk about the fact that this is the first year I've ever tried NARS Orgasm. I really feel like I'm 10 years late right now to everything with the hula especially, um, but I am so obsessed with this. But we're just gonna skim over the fact that I've never tried Orgasm until this year. I'm gonna introduce you guys to some cooler blushes that you may actually not have heard about. Um, so one of them is this Shiseido. As you can see, it's very well loved. And this is like this orangey coral color. And personally, I like butter and like kind of coral colors and like pink, pink blushes. This also has like this glittery shimmer in it that gives an immediate radiance off your skin. It's so pretty, I'm telling you. And then another one that I want to introduce you guys to is Jill Stewart Beauty's um, this blush. So it's got a, it's got like nine different colors going on in here with some orange, pink, and everything. So what I love doing is kind of mixing and matching all of these colors and just apply it on my face. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you haven't heard of this brand yet. So. I'm gonna bring this up to you. So, so I actually dabbled with different kinds to apply blushes this year. 
And for something like this or something that is more monotone, I like kind of going in with like a big brush like this that kind of you just kind of glide over your entire face, even over your nose bridge to kind of create that like um, connected look. Um, but sometimes you just want to go in with like a smaller brush to have a little bit more control over it. And when you have like a very pigmented blush like this, that's when I kind of like going in with a smaller brush. So this is a Bare Minerals blush. So this is a Bare Minerals brush that is actually um, supposed to be used for highlighting like over the edges if you want to give more accent. But I've actually like using this as like a blush brush. So right here, I'm just going to go in like that. And I kind of want a little bit more orange. So I'm going to dabble it a little bit more in the center right here. I'm going to tap that out. And then I'm going to apply that right here gently and just kind of like swinging it like this to create more of that subtle look. And I don't want too much pigment going on at first. I actually prefer just layering it on, kind of like foundation. It's kind of layer on two light layers is a much better way to go. So that's my technique with blushes as well. Like just like kind of feathering it out over your face with a small controlled blush. And with the rest of the pigment on your brush, just apply a little bit on your nose bridge to give it slightly more of a connected look. But once again, you don't want that much color right here. And as you saw, by using a brush like this, you kind of are able to make that connection with the Laura Mercier highlighter above right there and the bronzer from earlier. So we have a lot of different colors going on with the coral right here, the rose gold, and some of the more muted um, brown for the eyeshadow. And lastly, we're just going to go in with a little layer of lip gloss. I already love the kind of like cherry pink lip gloss that I have on here from Clay de Poo. And just to top everything off um, and make it last even longer, I love some lip oils. This Clarence lip oil is something that I got in um, February or March after um, having bought two in Korea over December. I'm seriously so addicted to this. And then another one is this Flush Beauty one. Um, if you saw my video on the full face of Flush Beauty, you know that I've been using this and I was a little intimidated by this purple color, but it actually turns into like this gorgeous red wine and magenta mix of a color. It just gives like a really hot little edgy look for your face. So, um, you know what? I don't know, but it's holiday season. I'm going to a holiday party later. So I'm going to go in with the red one. I really wish I could show you both, but if you want to see the flesh color look, then Go to my Instagram where I do a lot of lip um, swatches or watch my Flesh Beauty full face. Oh my God. My lips are so, so juicy now. All right, wow, that basically rounds out my beauty favorites of 2019. That wasn't that hard, right? It was pretty entertaining, I think. And now I have a pretty face to go in to celebrate the holidays. And before I go out, um, last one that I just got another mini of is the Jisoo um, Honey Infused Hair Perfume. And you know, I love their hair oil, but I love this hair perfume even more. So I'm just gonna spritz that all over my hair. This is seriously addicting though. Whenever I'm outside, strangers would ask me like, what are you wearing? And I'm like, some honey perfume. So if you guys want to see my clean beauty favorites of 2019, sorry I couldn't include it in this video, but I'm going to have another video of my clean beauty favorites. So keep an eye out for that and watch that video for a full rounded beauty favorites as well. But once again, thank you so much for all of your love and support to my channel um, this year. And I'm so, so, so grateful for all of you who follow me here, as well as my Instagram at Glow with Ava. So I'm going to come back to you in 2020 with more exciting videos. So make sure you are subscribed to see more of the exciting stuff next year. All right. Well, thank you so much and love you guys.